From the beginning of time, human beings have dreamt about life amongst the stars. In the 60s, the US and Russia explored the idea of sending humans and satellites to space and the moon. Since then, many players have entered the game. However, no one has been as impressive as Elon Musk and his company SpaceX. Musk, with his dreams of building a Mars colony, has inspired an entire generation to dream of the stars once again. If you have ever dreamed about becoming an astronaut, this video is for you. Welcome to Future Mission. Join us today as we explore the reality of space travel and show you what it takes to become a SpaceX astronaut. Many people don't understand the impact that Elon Musk's SpaceX has had on the American space industry and, by extension, the world. If you want to become an astronaut, SpaceX is probably the best choice. Or is it? For that, we will have to go back to Mother Russia. 2001, the fall of the Soviet Union was still fresh in memory, and a young multimillionaire named Elon Musk had just landed on its soil to purchase Russian space rockets. However, he left empty-handed after being disrespected, spat at, and insulted. This treatment served as fuel for Musk, and he decided to build his own rockets. Fast forward to 2021, and the head of Russia's space agency is inviting Musk to partner with them. SpaceX has been instrumental in liberating the United States from the steep $90 million levies it taxes the U.S. for trips to the International Space Station, ISS. On the 30th of May, a whole generation of Americans watched in nostalgia as their astronauts traveled for the first time in over a decade to the ISS with SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket and the Crew Dragon capsule. This historic launch marked a new age in America and a renewed interest in space travel amongst people. But let's focus on astronauts. In the 60s, no one knew anything about space and its effect on humans. So, the people that traveled to outer space were mostly handpicked by NASA from an elite group of Air Force members. These individuals were accustomed to risk-taking and exploring the boundaries of their limits as humans. They were also taken through the most rigorous mental and physical training that would prepare them for the unknown. Over the years, with advances in technology and a greater understanding of spaceflight, we now have civilians like a 90-year-old William Shatner, the man who played the iconic Captain Kirk in Star Trek, boarding Blue Origin's NS-18 to become the oldest person to fly to space. So, does this mean that anyone can become an astronaut? The answer lies somewhere between yes and no. While commercial space flights have their place in the race for space travel, an astronaut is not a tourist. The individuals who pay NASA to journey on suborbital missions are not astronauts. They are space tourists. I assume you are not after the tourism bit. I assume you want the real deal. You want to be an astronaut. Now, the first mistake is in the title of this video. Believe it or not, there are no SpaceX astronauts. SpaceX doesn't hire astronauts. It subcontracts to NASA, ESA, and other national or continental space agencies. So if you want to become a SpaceX astronaut, then you have to be a NASA astronaut. With that off the table, now I assume you want to know what it takes to become a NASA astronaut. Well. First of all, you need to be a citizen of the United States of America. It is stipulated in their lists of criteria and to highlight just how important it is, Colin Michael Fole, a popular NASA astronaut, had to change his nationality from British to American to fulfill this requirement. Other space agencies probably have the same requirement of citizenship. What it takes to become an astronaut can be broken down into three categories. Education, mental training, and physical training. Each of these three has specific requirements that must be met before you can even be considered. Let's get into them. In a time where a record amount of people are skipping college after high school, you might want to endure through the four-year course you have chosen if you are serious about a career as an astronaut. A master's degree in any of the STEM courses is the minimum for eligibility. Coupled with that, the roles for pilot and commander in space missions will always favor those with military or test pilot backgrounds. 
in recent times, the duties have greatly increased, crossing into territories of science and engineering. For example, on the International Space Station, crews have to ensure that the station is kept running smoothly and efficiently, and that experiments are done without any hitch. Next on the list is mental training. The concept of outer space can be very terrifying for even the strongest of minds. The vastness and emptiness of space, its extreme environments, and the often new situations you might encounter can stretch anyone's mind to its limits, testing their sanity, even with the protection that astronauts get from being sheltered within billion-dollar spacecraft. Most times, the protection can bring another issue with it, isolation. I'm not talking about claustrophobia, which is a valid issue itself. What I am referring to is that mental feeling of loneliness, nostalgia, and abandonment. This is why emotional stability is an absolute requirement for any astronaut going into space. A prospective astronaut must be in firm control of their emotions and must demonstrate proper cognitive thinking, under pressure, high levels of concentration, spatial orientation, manual dexterity, and a solid memory. Also, since astronauts hardly fly alone, their capacity for collaboration and team spirit is more than a necessity. With the current technology we have, NASA has said that a flight to Mars and back will take anywhere between 400 to 450 days, not nine months to get there, three months there, and nine months to get back. Imagine a journey that long. Imagine having to stay with people in tight spaces during those extended trips. Imagine the mental toll that will take on you. Next, we have physical training. There are a lot of peculiarities and dangers that come with space travel. From the point of takeoff, your body will be put to test and those that are underprepared could suffer serious damage. One of the major threats your body will face is muscle degradation. The lack of gravity in space means that your body will be docile, even when you're awake, alert, and functioning. To curb this threat, strict routines have been created for the astronauts to follow. They are required to go through intense training, seven days a week, three hours a day. They will lift weights and do cardio using special equipment, modified for test environments that simulate the weightlessness of space. You are also required to have 20-20 vision and blood pressure of 140 over 90. Currently, there is no age restriction for astronauts, but the average age sits somewhere around 34 years. Some activities are absolute requirements. They have to be exposed to high-speed maneuvers in jet planes, increased g-force in spatially constructed centrifuges, and safety procedures for radiation that will prepare them for any situation that they might experience from takeoff to landing. It doesn't end there, either. Simple activities like eating, drinking, and using the restroom have to be relearned to fit the requirements of zero-gravity environments. Lastly, astronauts have to go through simulations that replicate long periods of weightlessness. In NASA's Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory, there are massive swimming pools built for this exact purpose. Astronauts in their full spacesuits train like they are in outer space and carry out mock-up routines of the specific missions they are preparing for using replicas of whatever satellite they intend to work on. If the requirements and routines in this video do not intimidate you, then consider this. Many astronauts that come back from extended missions have to deal with the toll that their trips have taken on their bodies. For example, a mission to Mars will see astronauts encountering at least three different gravity fields. The nine months between planets will be long months of weightlessness for crews. However, by the time they land on Mars, they will be introduced to gravity that is a third of Earth's. Then, the journey back home will be back to the routine of no gravity, to Earth's gravity once again. This transition from one gravity field to another is no easy feat. A lot of factors come into play in situations like these. Your spatial orientation, head-eye and hand-eye coordination, balance and locomotion will be greatly affected. And as if regular motion sickness isn't bad enough, space has its version, which astronauts suffer from. Landing on Earth or Mars won't be easy. The transition from weightlessness to gravity could cause you to suffer what is called post-flight orthostatic intolerance. This is when a person is unable to maintain their blood pressure while standing up, and it can lead to lightheadedness and fainting. 
Then, there is the scary issue of bone loss. In space and without gravity, the human body can lose between 1% to 1.5% of mineral density per month during spaceflight, even with constant exercise. To make matters worse, returning to Earth might not correct your situation. And if you do not observe a proper diet and exercise routine, you stand the risk of losing muscle mass in zero gravity way faster than you would on Earth. To top it off, the fluids in your body will also shift towards your head in space and might put pressure on your eyes, which might cause problems with your sight. There is also an increased risk of developing kidney stones due to dehydration and an increased chance of excreting the calcium in your bones. I am not trying to scare you or make you give up on your dreams, but you need to understand the reality of what it takes to become an astronaut. Now, if all you want to do is visit space, then there are alternatives way easier than becoming an astronaut. You could take the route of William Shatner or other space tourists and pay for your trip to space or become popular enough that you are extended an invitation. But you must know that these trips can be very expensive. While you will not be required to go through the strict routines of your hosts, you might find yourself having to pull out upwards of $30,000 from your wallet for one night in space. Still, there is hope. With the amount of effort and resources that Elon Musk and other space entrepreneurs have been putting toward making commercial spaceflight possible, do not be surprised if someday, during your lifetime, you find yourself in a rocket through space, basking amongst the stars.